the whole football stadium is packed, sold out. It's coming your way. Switch or the Condit one? You're not a martial artist. Which one do you want? Do you want the leg kick or the inside leg kick with the lift? I want you to not look like you suck. You want to do it? You want to do it? All right, we're doing it. This is how we're going to open it. Well, hi, guys. How far away I guess I'm starting? Now, I'm going to kick the shit out of you. No, you're not. You don't want me to? You can show. Go no, I'm not. Oh, yeah, the, it's red. I'm not going to do it to you. No, not on my head. No, I wouldn't do it to you at all. I don't have kick pads. I'm not doing that shit without kick Take pads. Take your boots off. Dude, I am not doing that shit without kick my pads. My hand? You could do my hand. My hat? No, that's too high. I can't get up that high. No, I'll. No, that's when I hit you. No. They're recording and now you want to back off. No, I'm not doing it. Okay. I'm not doing it. If I had my kick pads, I would do it. Can we start this? Oh, we're doing it now. I thought we started now. That's what red lights. Oh, this is what this thing means? We're not real fucking professional. I didn't catch that at all. Did you the, see that? The karate can leave, chop? Can we leave this one in? <laughs> real fucking professional. Highspots.com. By the way, I want this in there. So in high spots, I used to go and get like the matches I wanted, custom tape or whatever. You guys remember that at all? No? Am I dating myself? Yeah, nobody's as yeah. old as you. Yeah, yeah. So, at Mad Kingston 1981, baby! Good year. Uh, fucking, I would get all the Japanese, like all Japan and New Japan matches I wanted. Then all of a sudden, you guys decided to stop doing the custom tapes. What kind of bullshit was that? Who made that call? There's no teacher here. You they can put your hand out. My, what happened? They, yeah, they were. <laughs> Has to stop. Well. I had so many jokes that I'm just like. Ethan Page, it's 2018. Keep those jokes to yourself. <laughs> People are trying to get signed in 2018. <laughs> oh. All right, leave that in, Michael. Speaking of getting signed. I'm not getting signed. You I'm, almost did. No, I didn't. Uh, pr are pressure. we doing this? Is this really it's happening? Recording. Yeah, look. Is this what it is right now? Look. All right, he's doing this. All right, you need 90 minutes? Huh? Jesus Let's do this. Count me do down, you have 90 brother. minutes in you? I got a, about a good hard 30. That's what I heard you did last night when I came into the hotel and you were butt ass naked. That's you guys' fault. <laughs> no one boxed me or texted me. That is that's not true. Fitch no, it. Rook did not hit me up at all. I heard the box. I even said Eddie, let us stay. I, dude, it's not even there. All right, like, anyways. Uh, back to getting signed. Compound. What up, Amazon? What up, the DHS fam? Go ahead. Back to getting signed. I was never. You anywhere, no. you were wearing a WWE T-shirt. They gave me that because I was wearing a cutoff T-shirt, and they said in the email, no cutoff T-shirts. And what does the idiot Eddie Kingston do? Go with a cutoff T-shirt. Okay, so you did the tryout. Yeah. You were featured. went horribly. You were fe no. You told me you did good. Nah, I didn't do that good. Why would you lie to me? I'm your friend. So okay, so it went horribly. It went alright, but it wasn't good enough. What do you mean good enough? What you didn't even mean? wait for the response because oh, no. you signed with Impact Wrestling. Yeah, at the so, time it was TNA. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So what what was the thought process of Who's doing baby? doing the trial? How long how long were you wrestling at that point? Fifteen. So fifteen years. Yeah. Ultimate goal was not WWE. Okay. So there's a little Now it is because now they're signing indie guys. They were then. Not when I first broke in. No, when I say when you did the tryout. Oh, yeah, yeah, but when I first broke in, they were like signing guys like out of catalogs and stuff. With guys they saw. Well, like Calvin, whatever, whoever had a good look. They weren't Ball really. Players. Yeah, they weren't really looking at Ball indie guys. guys. Yeah, I mean, that was their thing at the time, so. And now? Now they're signing indie guys who were better than them. Okay. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you did the tryout. You said it went. To Michael, it's all right. You can, you can put the headphones down, Mike. Sorry, right, man. Just sit down. You got we got the levels up, man. <laughs> and you put the headphones. Why back are you on. not answering the question? I'm answering the question. The tryout went okay. Okay. I could have done better. My cardio was better, but not as good as it should have been. Because you smoke? No, because I do a lot of other things. Crack? No. <laughs> Give me them krills. Oh uh, my god. Give me them krills. No. Uh, I don't know. It, it could have been better. And uh, now I'm trying to get serious, and you're laughing at? Yeah. Mike, you, you see crack. this guy? And this is the show you get. Why don't you give me a show, Mike? This could I be, you at, some the real, end, at the end I of the I just give you some real street shit, Mike. 
You know what I mean? We're talking some real life. Don't just give me a, a, a nod. Yeah, no, not with New Orleans. Give me, unless we go to the projects in New Orleans, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll interview people. Can anyway, you answer the question. No, it went okay. What happened was afterwards, I had no inkling. They didn't give me no kind of like, hey man, don't worry. You know, whatever. What are they? You don't need a side deal. You have to no. At least wait for them to say. No, no. I'm, I, at the time, I was 35. No. Two days later, Impact or whatever it was at the time was like, here's the X amount of money we're going to pay you. Yeah. At the time, I was dating someone in the business, and yeah. she was there, and I said, oh, might as well work with the girl, you know, and sign. I got money. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not knocking people who have the dream of going to WWE, but let's, this is a business, right? Yeah. Don't be a mark for the letters. Be a mark for the dollar signs. So I'm still like that. Whoever pays me first, I'm going to go. But what if that... No, that's, it, that's, that's just the way it was. Also, so I, you don't, I sit there and I have low self-esteem anyway. A lot of us wrestlers do. Everybody does. Yeah. So I already thought in my head. That's uh, going to suck. In my, in, in my head, I thought, ah, they're not going to want me. Ah, well, at least I had a tryout. Thought that would never happen. Ah, oh, okay. Tina. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I literally dealt with like the same exact... Like I was supposed to have a tryout. In yes, I remember. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. And uh, Impact offered me a thing. I was having the same problem. I was thinking about you. Yeah, because we both just were beating ourselves up. Like, there's only certain things I'm confident in. And a lot of times in wrestling, it's not It's not wrestling. It's not, like, there's a lot of parts of wrestling I'm not confident in. You know what I mean? I'm confident that I'm a, I'm a grown-ass man, and I handle what I need to handle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, with sweet high kicks. <laughs> Sorry, man. I was watching the show yesterday. I don't care, bro. I it was care. awful. You're out of your mind. It was a anyway, let's get back on track. karate kick. Anyways, I, back to the track. I want you guys to film him because I trained at ATT East Orlando. Michael, look at me, please. And we're going to, uh, you guys are coming. You guys from North Carolina, right? It ain't that deep of a drive to go to Orlando, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was asking Michael. Right. No. <laughs> eight hours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That ain't that bad. I want you, he's going to fly in, and I want you to Who's film. Who's paying for that? I'll pay for you. And I want you to film him sparring with me. Fine, I'll fly you too. And I want you guys to film him and me beating the piss out of him in sparring. Muay Thai sparring. That's all I want. Why I'm throwing the challenge down. Stop. Here's the trailer. I'm throwing the challenge down to you. Come. 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 We have enough space here. Come. I don't want my kick pads. You don't need a kick pad. Yeah, I do, bro. I don't. My shoes. Before, you didn't think this was recording earlier and you were talking I about I saw my kick pads. Shit. I had my kick pads on at the Bloodsport show. Yeah, what, the Finn When you were wearing gear. I hate gear. Which brings me to I my next question. Gear. Mike, hate it. Hate it. Why hate it. don't you wear gear anymore? Because it's boring. I hate it. What the hell is boring? It bothers me. I just don't like it. How does it bother you? To um, look like a professional wrestler. Putting it on. You have to put your off. basketball shorts yeah, on. Yeah, it's easier. And your boots? I, boot. I hate boots too now. Yeah, I but oh, so you're not going to wear them? Nah, I got them. Because my feet are wear ugly. Tims? I wish I could wear, just wear Tims. But no, I just don't like gear. I hate it. So you decided to wear? Whatever I wanted. Which is? Whatever, at that day. Whatever I feel like that day. If I feel like wearing a pink boa, I'll wear a pink boa. It all depends on my on my mood. No, you have like a little, like you have basketball shorts. No, it's just basketball shorts, is it? No, they're customized. Oh yeah, that was for like when I thought I was going to do something on TNA at the time before you they got shorts let made? me go. Yeah. Okay, so back to that then. So you ended up signing with them? Mm hmm For how long? One year. That's it? Yeah. It was a year contract. Okay. Yeah. Was anything guaranteed to you? Other no. than just the when when I was on, I was getting paid. So it wasn't like here's this idea we have for you. Oh no! Oh no! No! Yeah! 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 Uh, they had the DCC idea for me. So that was With specifically me, yes, me Storm and Bram, Bam Bam. And yeah, did they it like, go exactly how it was? No, changed? of course it didn't go exactly how. Okay, it was so told. no, they, really. things change. Things change. You know what I mean? Uh, ownership change. You know what I'm saying? Like. So what was the switch? Oh, all right. So what happened was basically I, and this is just my opinion, Billy Corgan was there, and I believe Billy Corgan threw me a bone. So you think and he's was, the reason you got I got signed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and Dave Legano. What? Because they were always what? fans of mine. Okay. I was going to say what? And I think when the what rest, relationship did you have with Billy Corgan? Through Legano. Oh, okay. And then Billy sold some of my stuff and okay. liked it. So uh, I believe he just threw me a bone thinking that he was going to take over the company and then that whole big... Spiel happened, which has been documented. I don't know the whole story. I just so he know. was owner, 
I think he thought he was going to become owner. Or money guy. Money, yeah, it definitely was the money dude. And then... And I think he threw me a bone, and then... When they saw, like like you said, that picture they put up of me at the tryout, yeah, yeah. I think when the other people who had a call to sign me or not saw that, they're like, oh, okay. And, like, I had a lot of people in the think back... Think that's a thing? Yeah. A lot of people in the back uh, definitely wanted me there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would say most locker rooms... Enjoy Eddie Kingston. I don't know why. I'm just myself. But, um, yeah, they asked me, you know, so I, like, I had people who had my back, and I think Billy just pushed it, and Lagana pushed it, and then that picture that went up about me being at the tryout helped. Yeah. Storm wanted me with him, Bram wanted me with him. They told us the DCC idea. So, did they already have the DCC? They already were planting it, they just needed a third guy. So, and people, became, so people were already on TV with the masks? No, not with the masks yet. Storm already did the angle where he left. Oh, okay. Bram already got beat up by Decay or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And he was off TV for a little bit, you know? So that, that was the whole thing. And they were like, well, you're going to wear this suit. You're going to wear this mask. That was all Storm's idea. Okay. Storm was the originator of the whole DCC thing. Okay. And it, it, there was a look. There was like... Yeah, 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 yeah. It's merch. just everybody... Everybody had like, uh, I stood back, like, okay, whatever, man, pay me. You know what I mean, let me do my thing and pay me. But uh, a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of chefs, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean, yeah. like whatever that saying is. And like, too many cooks in the kitchen? Yeah, there you go, yeah. It was like, there was too many hands in there. And it just, it, it became watered down. And then at one point, we didn't know if we were faces or heels. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah. Storm was acting like a face while me and Bram were still acting like heels. And then, da, 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 well, da. the way it was looking was that you guys are going to split. Or he was going to ditch you guys. <clears throat> yeah, 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 Well, that was not the original plan. So, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't know. I don't remember, to be honest with you, the original plan of the whole thing. Thanks, thanks, Mike. I appreciate the lighting. Appreciate you. <laughs> Mike's a really good dude. Mike's my spot, y'all. Thank you. Do you have a Twitter? At High Spots WN, man, that's Mikey. Hit him up. Tell, tell Eddie King. Tell him Eddie King said, "Yo, yeah." He's literally right in front of you. I know, but you I'm trying to tell. Eddie I'm trying to tell the you. people. I'm trying to tell the people that you know, hook Mike up. Yeah, like that. That's the New York thing. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Uh that ass. You're though. out of control. I know. I'm tired. So um, yeah, I'm tired because someone at five o'clock in the morning was banging on my hotel door. Yeah, it was us. It was Rook. It wasn't you. I didn't bang on the door. It wasn't Davy Vegas. Davy Vegas was talking to that uh, prostitute. What? What? I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm what are joking. you shaking your head for? What prostitute? You got Mike in there, isn't it? Now. Oh, oh, but last night, Davy Vega. And it's not true. But last night, Davy Vega did pick up Bubba Ray Dudley's cousin. No, Bubba don't say that. that. Don't say that. Look at his face. No, she didn't. She say he was cute. That was it, right? Let's stop it. Right there. <laughs> Let's like, stop it right there. Nothing happened. I it's didn't bring so that up. I didn't bring that Did up. Do these cameras turn up? I didn't bring... This better not come out of my money if he's in there. Right? He's so bad. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't wait till this is on Sirius XM Radio Bully Beatdown or whatever. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you do. Oh, we made a, I made a joke to Rook earlier, earlier, like, if something would have worked out between those two, and we're watching the Hall of Fame, and Davey Vegas in the front like this. <laughs> yeah, and then Bestie start doing the 3D, it'd be great. What? It would be great. Oh, no. Oh, we are, we're telling oh, stories now. Oh, we're stories. Yo, hold on. The, the, the best part is, <laughs> Vega wanted nothing to do with it. Well, he wanted to be a respectful man, keep yeah, it on Bourbon Street. And then uh, Fidget's like... Nah, we're going back. <laughs> and then Vega got roped into it. He's just a beautiful man, though. You know, you know what it is? Me and Rook decided what it was. Because, like, girls like Davey Vega. It's fucking weird. He's ugly as shit. He's an ugly man. Dude, Not as bad looking as Jigsaw. You have never had an ugly girlfriend. Who? You. Oh, no, I've had. Yeah. None that well, I've not seen. girlfriends. Not girlfriends. Not girlfriends. I've had ugly women in my bed. Dude. <laughs> Yeah, I don't okay. date. I don't date ugly girls. Yeah, I plug them, but I don't date them. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Times get rough, man. When you're in your teenage and twenties, you know. Right? <laughs> oh, so like 13, 14 years ago? I lost my virginity. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. So, 
What were we talking about? All right, so D the DCC, whatever, had all these original ideas. Yeah. Then ownership changed, and it got real weird, and then Jeff Jarrett came in. So Jarrett, that's the ownership change. Yes, Jarrett came in and was like, yo, James Storm sells a lot of merch as the cowboy. I understood. It's business. Okay. Let's break up the DCC. Cool. I thought it would just be, be me and Bam Bam, because I like teaming with him. Yeah. I'm not going to say what popped up, what happened. You know what happened because you know my personal life. I talked to you. You're a friend. Yes. Not going to get deep into it here because, you know, yo, it may sell DVDs. I got my money regardless. It's not like I'm getting <laughs> half of this. You know what I'm saying? I, I get a flat fee. But something went down and uh, I, I was unprofessional. Let's just call it like it was. And Street Daddy came out. Yeah. And I was very unprofessional about it. It ruined a lot of things in my life. It got real dark for me. More than just... Impact. Yes, it affected everything in my life. I was yeah. drinking a lot, gained a lot of my weight back, uh, was suicidal for about two, three months. You know Jesus what I mean? Jesus Christ. Oh, I didn't tell you that, right? No. Well, there you go, shocker. I was suicidal because, like, I. As a kid, I didn't like a lot of things. You did say you didn't want to get that deep into this, so like... No, no, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not mentioning names. Okay, okay. But I'm just telling you personal stuff, you know what I mean? Because, like, I'm a personal guy. When I cut my promos, I mix wrestling into it, but nine out of ten times I'm shooting... About from, something. Personal. That something's going on with me. So, no, I was suicidal, whatever. It happens, you know what I'm saying? And uh, because I give... Not that I gave so much to wrestling. And wrestling, life in general... I love how people try to take wrestling and separate it from life. Paying dues is not just a wrestling thing. Mm -hmm. Paying dues is a life thing. And the last due you pay is death. You know what I mean? That's when it's all said and done. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like you got to go through things in life, not just wrestling. It's the same thing. You know what I mean? So whatever, I was going through whatever. And it just, things went downhill, man. Like my personal life, I was suicidal. Like I gave, I loved, I loved pro wrestling since I was a kid. The only way my mother, I was a hyper kid. The only way my mother would be able to calm me down was that she went to the video visions. Yeah, I'm dating myself before Blockbuster. I'm young. Shit, and I read the movie. She would just buy whatever said wrestling. Whatever. So I was able to watch Memphis Wrestling, NWA. They had tapes? Yeah, tapes at the store. No one knew what the difference, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I'll never forget one of my first wrestling memories is my mom one day picked me up from camp. Well, they dropped me off in University Avenue in the Bronx. Drop me off the big yellow bus, whatever. We go upstairs, my mom gets Chinese food I used to love as a kid. Um, the fried chicken and the french fries. The so, wait, what? In what New York, there's in New Chinese, York, Chinese food. food that's where you got it from, the Chinese food place. So it's a different thing, man, with the wonton soup and then the, you know, whatever. Yeah, the french fries? Yeah, dude, it's crazy. It's crazy. You don't know. You haven't lived yet. So, <laughs> he hasn't lived. So, uh, Let's get some Chinese she got fries. that. She got that. And chicken mo man. There you go. Yeah, you okay, happy yeah, now? yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so my memory is that sitting in the big boy fucking like lounging chair, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, what yeah, I mean? lazy boy, yeah, the one with the rocket, and her just putting in WrestleMania three, and then right after WrestleMania That's four, a good one then right after WrestleMania five, and it kept me quiet. Next day, Saturday, NWA, put that in, uh, crazy Memphis wrestling brawls or something. You know, I mean, those are my first wrestling memories, and I've been in love since. And like I said, I remember one day in school, people wrote, uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? Most idiotic kids, right? Football player, this, that, blah, blah, blah. I said professional wrestler. So from the start, this is that, what that, No, that's what I wanted. Now, did my life go a little bit haywire? Yeah, because, you know, it is what it is, you know? But you've been in this for how long? 16 years. And, and a lot of it's my fault. Like, I take responsibility for me, A, not being where I want to be. B, be where I think I should be. You know what I mean? Yeah. I take responsibility for that. I was almost 290 pounds at one point. And I didn't work out. I didn't go to the gym. I just watched wrestling, did the shit in the ring. You know what I mean? But I, I put it to you like this. I played wrestler. I wasn't a wrestler. A lot of people do that. I understand that. I but, get caught doing that. Yeah, but, but then people sit there. I, I love how some of the younger guys sit there like, mm, well, man, why am I? Mm, well, my dude, do you tan? Do you oh, go to the dude. gym? Yeah, you know, do you, my favorite says, do you hit the road? Knowing that you're going to lose money, do you hit the road and travel double digits, not eight hours, nine hours, I'm talking about 12, 15 hour drives. 
knowing that you're not going to get paid that well, but you're knowing that you just want to get in that ring. You yeah. want to get in that ring in front of a different crowd <clears throat> and learn your craft. It's not a thing anymore because now it's like, oh my god, this is the fucking soother generation of indie wrestlers. Yeah, like fucking like little kids have a soother. Oh, okay, okay. A binky or whatever. A binky, yeah, 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 yeah. Where it's like everyone's coddled because... Everyone got scooped up. There's nobody on the indies anymore, so everyone is already. Yeah, I take offense to that. I'm still on the indies. But you're it's relevant for 16 years. Relevant for 16 years. Get out of me. Uh, but I'm saying try like, that. All, all the not without one 450 oh my God. or one shooting star press. I've been relevant. Davy Vega. Anyway, go ahead. A lot of the stars all got signed, and mm-hmm. there's this thirst for new talent, and all these guys that are wrestling for one, two, three years are all pushed up into this. Well, you have to. You have to. That's fine, but then they they don't have that like they weren't bred into this to actually like have hunger and like drive twelve hours for no money because they're already getting f- a fucking flight to wherever after wrestling for two or paying years. or paying for their own flight. Dude, I didn't get flown anywhere and refused to get on a plane for wrestling until it was offered to me, and it took I think seven or eight years. Yeah, that's how we, that's the usual. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? I'm not knocking this generation. It's, it's their thing. Do I think some of them are good? Yeah. Do I think a lot of them suck? Yeah. But the, but I'm just. <laughs> I think a lot of you guys suck. I do. I think some. There's very rare guys who I young guys now like three four years in, who are actually good who get it. Yeah. I think everyone else fucking sucks. But it's not it, it the, the thing is not. And you know their, who you are. It's also not their fault. No. Because that's that's wrong. That's wrong. It is their fault. It, it is their fault because they have to learn the trade. But no, just like no any one's, job, no one's telling them. Oh that no, that. that's that's on me because I don't care enough. Well, that's everybody. Because like even like some young wrestlers, I'll try to give them advice and they're just like, and I'm like, all right, man. Like I haven't done this long enough. Like yeah. I, haven't, I haven't had people send me mail saying that they didn't commit suicide because of one of my matches or promos. Like I did. I like I wasn't signed to a TV deal. Like I wasn't. Like, I didn't have a, a tryout. You know what I mean? Like, like my name doesn't ring bells. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. So I look at them and go, not worth it. But then I hang out with, like, and I'm going to put them over. I hang out with Davey Vega and Rook. They, they're they hungry. They oh, want to yeah. learn. Well, they still, they drive out to Canada. Yeah, like, ACH, the young man. dude. Young yep. dude, he's hungry. He wants to learn. Uh, Santana and Ortiz, the LA Extras. Love those guys. Yeah, they're hungry. They want to learn. Don't put over our driving abilities too much because we're looking <laughs> yeah, look, you'll get flown. Vega will never get flown. Sweet, thanks, Eddie. <laughs> but no, that's just, it's just, but you know what, though? It is their fault because just like any other job, you have to learn your trade. When I was an iron worker in New York, I had to learn how to weld. I had to learn how to read a blueprint. You know what I'm saying? I had to learn this or I wouldn't have had jobs. Well, they would have laid me off, go back down to the union hall, and sit there like a muck and be like, oh man, I hope I go out today. Yeah, but that's not how wrestling is anymore. But the, because, it's, it's, but it can be. No, because it, the it, customers dictate what they want. I think it's always been like that. The fans have always dictated who was over or not. It's more now because of the social media and yeah. stuff. But the fans, and it's a small minority of people that are like mm-hmm. handpicking these mm-hmm. unqualified people to be superstars. And look, I'm not bitter or angry. I'm not. I'm not bitter and angry. My life's pretty good. Man. I should have been dead at like twenty something. Seven is the. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the magic number. Yeah, 27, yeah. So, like, I'm, I'm pretty good, man. I got to see, what, 38 to 40 states? Five countries on another man's dime? You know what I mean? Do I want more? Yeah, of course. Who doesn't? Do I want to be, uh, uh, for my own self, my own ego, yeah. I want it to be, I want to, like, have it stroked by being signed somewhere big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a goal-oriented person. When Would I, you... When I went to Japan... I wasn't just like, yes, I finally went to Osaka Pro, I'm happy. No, it was, I want to go back again, I want to be a top guy. When I got signed to TNA, it wasn't awesome, I'm on national TV, yeah, you're right. No, I want right away, the, the day I signed my name on the dotted line, in my head I went, I want to be a top guy. Okay. So and I don't have to put the work in, and trust me, it's hard, man, when being a former fat kid and... You know what I mean? You love food. Like, I'm, I'm sitting right beside you. No, me and me, <laughs> you, bro, We've had, me and him have had long conversations and on car trips, not about wrestling, not about women, not about like some G stuff, about ice cream. I do nothing G at all. But no, I'm just saying, <laughs> it's about Mike, about ice cream, like which one's the best one, and we would argue for like hours about it. You know what I mean? So like, you're talking, 
It's hard, man. It is. It's a hard thing. And it's and it, and it, if you let wrestling beat you down, worrying about other people, like why is this dude there? I should be there. Pause. You shouldn't be anywhere. That guy's not you. Stop right. looking outside yourself. Right. It you took know? that took me a long fucking time. No, and I understand that. That, that. that took me a long time too. I think that comes with age yeah. and time in the ring. Like and I, sometimes, yeah, and confidence. Sometimes I can't watch NXT. I can't. Why? Because I'll sit there and be like, eh. Because you know everybody? No, yeah, that and also that feeling of, I would have done better. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 but yeah. then there's moments where I finally break out of that and I go, you know what? My friends are wrong. Yeah. I got to watch my boy Morton Stone. I got to watch Biff or what, what's his name? Uh, yeah. Oni Lorcan? Yeah, Oni. Right? I got to watch him. Or Gargano uh, yeah. or Ciampa, like my friends. I gotta watch my friends. When yeah. Steam was there, when when uh, 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 Sami Zayn was yeah, there, yeah. you know what I mean? Pac and all that, you know? I had to watch it because those are my friends. I want to show support. Yeah. And I also, that gets the bitterness and the, the I hate saying bitterness because bitterness is bullshit. Just gets the bullshit out the way. You know what I'm saying? None of us have any right to be bitter because nothing's old. Oh, in wrestling? And life or wrestling. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing's old, man. I can sit here all day and, and, and say, list my accomplishments, and in my opinion, they're not good enough. So why am I bitter? Why? I just gotta get to the fucking gym. I gotta go to training, you know what I mean? Gotta tan, gotta hit the road. And I gotta put on matches and tell stories that I know I can do. And look, and the one thing I am confident about, cause you're like, oh, I'm real self that I am. I think a lot of us are. One thing I'm so confident, no one, and I'm looking directly at the camera, because I, I believe this, I really do believe this. Mike, zoom in on this one, you feel me? No, no, not yet, maybe on post. <laughs> Jesus. I feel it. Bottom line is, no one can tell a story like I can. No one can make you believe like I can. Because everything I say is from a place that's real. Nobody fucks with me on that. Nobody. That's what I believe in. Has it been 90 minutes, Mike? No? All right, let's go. No, we still have oh more. God. Oh, you want me to stretch out that part? All right, Mike. <laughs> well, I will stretch out that part. <laughs> that never asked me back. I don't know what any of you, you look like you were making a fucking pizza. No, he's like, he's <laughs> like, give me two minutes. Oh, the baseball? Oh, no. How about, no, my, no. How about my Yankees, bro? How about my Yankees? Huh? I know it's early in the year. I get You're it. not even letting me ask but, you questions. Oh, okay. Oh, that's what he wanted was the question. Oh my God. I don't know what he's doing. Anyway, I know how to tell a story. I'm a storyteller, man. I'm not a pro wrestler. I'm not an entertainer. I'm a storyteller. That's real. I think that's a pro wrestler. I know, but I'm a storyteller. And an entertainer. I'm still a storyteller. I actually hate wrestling you sometimes. I know. Because you don't tell your opponent. I remember telling you this. Your bullshit injuries when you're faking Mm -hmm. it outside of the fucking ring. You going to tell him that story about me? Working you with my shoulder? Is that what you're talking no, about? By all means, please. No, you're telling No, you're the storyteller. <laughs> I'm gonna smack the shit out of my No, alright, so bet. Alright, check it, boom. Me and him are doing some type of match at uh, Falls what's, County, Falls County some and, uh, shit. in Ohio, right? Yep. In AIW. Yep. And uh, John Thorne, whatever. So, rest in peace, big as my man. So, uh, I don't know, he hit me with something and, and you can kill, clearly see that it hit my shoulder. Yeah. And I said, oh, let me sell my shoulder. So I'm selling it. I'm fighting back and I'm selling it, fighting back. So I cut you off, whatever. Yeah. In my head, I thought this would be kind of cool. I remember Mel Gibson from We Leap the Weapon popping his shoulder back in by ramming it into a wall. Yeah. So I cut you off. I hit you with something, whatever. Hey, look at me. I start throwing my shoulder in door frame. into the post. Yeah. And I, I may believe I popped it back yeah, in. Yeah. I go over to you to pick you up. Oh my god, what the, are you okay? Dude, I thought oh I, my god. I thought you were fucked. Because when you were selling, you were selling like a wounded animal. You were like, ah, ah. <laughs> it was it was fucking ridiculous. And I was like, oh my god, he's actually hurt. And in my head, it it was like I picked him up and went, oh, you're such a mark. <laughs> In my head, though. Oh, you well. also refused to plan anything with me that match, too. Yeah, I thought, let's just have an organic type thing. Yeah, you were like, walk and talk, baby. And yeah, I was walk like, and talk. I just started with AIW, so I just started like breaking out American Indies. I've been wrestling like seven years. And like to me, wrestling Eddie Kingston at the time was like super exciting and like, you know, a big deal for me. So. <laughs> and then you were like, yeah, we're not going to plan anything. Walk and talk. And I was like, are you fun? Tell me that wasn't fun, though. 
You had fun. Man. I thought I hurt you. Yeah, because you're a mark. So I, <laughs> but the thing I thought in my head was, if I got him, that means I got the people. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. then I told you, oh, you're a mark, I'm fine, bro. Let's have fun. Yeah, but that's part of the storytelling. Yeah, yeah. Convincing and yeah, 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 actually yeah. being able to... Well, I also, a lot of times in my head, I just go with, what would I really say in this? What would Eddie Kingston, because Eddie Kingston's Eddie Moore at 17. You know, that's my character. It's me when I was 17, 18. Okay. What would I do in this real situation? You know what I mean? And I've been in certain situations in my life where you have to act accordingly. <laughs> you know, let's just say. Well, isn't that what pro wrestling is? Mm -hmm. Well, kind of. Yeah, kind of. I, I, to but act here's the thing. Uh, my favorite American wrestler of all time is Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's like Steve Austin and Eddie Gilbert are up there. Okay. Hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert. Look him up on YouTube. It was amazing. Um, and I'll never forget, Steve Austin said this in an interview. He said, oh, Stone Cold's just a part of me turned up a thousand notches. Yeah. And I look at Stone Cold and I go, this dude made the most money in wrestling. Yeah. Saved the company. Why wouldn't I want to model myself after that? Yeah. Now, not be him, but take a, a, a part of me and turn you up a thousand notches. Yeah. And that's it. I, uh, and you love The Rock, and I, I believe The Rock said something very similar to it. Well, he's like, yeah. The, I genuinely have done the exact same thing. Is mm -hmm. you just take yourself and turn the volume up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not Maybe. a little bit, all the way up, man. Well, <laughs> well oh. for you, there is no. Uh, nah, there's, you're there's, 11, a 20. There's no. There's no what, I'm a, my mother said this to me one time. She said I was, I'm an extremist. You know what I mean? So everything's going really, really bad or really, really good. There's no. But way. I also met your father. He's out of his mind. And when I met your dad, I remember. Hey! So I was running Alpha One show in Hamilton, and you were like, "Hey, they're gonna visit your brother." Yeah. In Buffalo or something, yeah. they might swing by at the show. Maybe. Yeah, it was a maybe. There was no like conf confirmation or anything. No, because so the, gi the Giants. Oh, because I didn't know the Giants were playing that week or they had a bye week. I forgot. So that's a th that's a thing. That's the thing with my dad. Yeah. Oh man. I do the same. Couldn't thing. miss it, right? No, we can't miss the games. Jesus. So anyway, not in the NFL. So it's only seventeen weeks, eighteen weeks. You can't. No. Running a show is already stressful enough, yeah. and dealing with a bunch of people is. I don't know why you book some of those people that <laughs> that give you headaches, but God. Me neither, Eddie. So, so I'm walking past oh, this high this Go hallway. Ahead. There's like a big set of stairs, and all of a sudden I just see this man, and he's what. He's not Puerto. He doesn't look Puerto Irish. Rican, so he doesn't look anything like Eddie. And he just he's yelling downstairs, Eddie, hey, Eddie, where are you at? I got your sandwich. Yeah, I got me a sandwich. <laughs> like, got you a sandwich, boy. I'm like, who the hell is? I go, hello, and then your mom kind of like peeked through. Is Eddie down there? And I was like, oh my god, I know her because you post videos of her That's my online mom, all the time. So I was like, yeah, I come down. And he was, ex you guys. Started headlocking each other and punching each other. Yeah, it's like Jesus. That's every day. You guys are twins. Yeah, it's every day we punch each other really for real. Why? Because it's real life. Because <laughs> it's real life shit. But now, yeah. Uh, oh, another thing. I don't know that. I don't know. Nah, it's just the way I was raised, man. Like we rough house. You know, that's, I was the first boy. The first grand, uh, whatever boy born. So yeah. the Irish side of my family. I'm Irish and Puerto Rican. The Irish side of my family was all male. Football players, fucking, you know, steak and eggs and ooh, mean and tough, you know? So that's how I grew up, just rough housing. And that kept with you for a while. Oh yeah, a lot of the lessons they taught me, like for instance, everyone loves, and I've said this before, but like a lot of people like that line, the world is cold, bundle up. It's so, like my favorite. My father told me that at eight. For real? Mm -hmm. Eight years old, he said that to me. So you didn't even think of that? No. My other line that I used from my dad was, uh, when you die, you're the only one in that casket. Don't forget that. Oh, that's he said good. that He said that to me at 12 because I wanted to go out with my friends. And my mother was like, no, you acted up in school. You can't go out. I'm like, I want to go out. Right, what the fuck? Yeah. He's like, hey, you love your friends, all that stuff? Great. But just remember, when you die, you're the only one in that casket. They won't, you know what I mean? They won't be in there with you. So 12 years old. And I went, oh, okay. And you remembered that forever? Yeah. Oh, there's other lessons too. What was it? My uncle Kevin would say, uh, "What is it? One woman, one God, one country, all the time." Uh, what's another one? Uh, he told me <laughs> they hated saying I was Puerto Rican. I don't know why, because they love my mother to death. Like I don't get it. Okay. But he would be like, "You're an Irish. <laughs> You're an Irish Catholic from the Bronx. No one's ever gonna like you. Understand that." 
They said that to me like at six or seven. Jesus. So that's why I always have that underdog attitude. You know what I mean? All that attitude. Like when we go out to the bar or something, like you, you said it to me, my attitude changes. Oh, yeah. Like I'm kind of like. Oh, yeah. You're waiting for something. Now. Yeah, yeah. It's just experience and what I was growing up around. Like last night we went to uh, Bourbon Street, Burns, or whatever the fuck. And Vega and Fitch and Brooke were like looking at me because I was walking the street like. Looking for exits, trying to see yeah. who was acting up. I've been out with you. Yeah. 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 But, you know, then I'll, I'll loosen up after a while, but I never really f- truly feel safe. Because there's mean people in this world. Man. But you think some people think that's you? I don't think so. I'm out there having fun. I'm not trying to rob nobody or hurt nobody. Right, Mike? <laughs> Mike knows. He's saying no. Me and Mike went out together one he time. You remember that, Mike? <laughs> remember that time we went out together in Vegas at that strip club? And we got that training? Craziness, man. <laughs> so, so speaking that of... That didn't really happen, by the way. So I got you, Mike. Don't worry about it. Speaking <laughs> of wild nights... Mm. Uh, Before we get there, let's go to the first time you gigged. If you want to talk about wrestling matches... That was actually... Talk. I did take notes in that. All right, all right, all right. All right so we'll go away, no, 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 no. Go ahead. No, you we'll brought get, it up. We'll get to yours. It's your show. Oh my god. All oh. I was gonna do. Where's was, Bill Carr? That's who I mean. I don't know why he wasn't booked for this guy. Oh my god. This is god. awful. Stop derailing this fucking thing. All right, Let me ask some questions. All right, Amy. So, I booked you for an Alpha One show, April 20th, 2013. Your hand was broken. You no showed my show. That wasn't and, broken. And you disappeared I, uh, yeah, yeah. from the earth. Oh, yeah, for a little bit, yeah. King got crazy. Yeah. Uh, I got drunk one night. I got into a fight. I'm not going to say who. Okay. You already know who. I'm not putting that out there. Got into a fight at a hotel room. Uh, when I fight, I don't like people breaking it up because I attack them. Because I'm, I'm at that point where I don't see people. Okay. I just see like enemies. You know what Shapes. I mean? Yeah. And I'm just swinging. So I forgot. Someone grabbed me. I threw them through the TV. I grabbed a lamp, threw a lamp at one person, and then I went to go swing at someone else, and they moved, and I, my hand went through a mirror, and it cut, like, all that. Yeah, because you needed to get... I had to have surgery. Yeah. My fo- so uh, I woke up the next day, hung over. I'm walking to the store in Tampa, Florida, and my hand is just drenched in blood. Drenched, and you can see the white in the knuckle, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I'm taking off my shirt, I'm sweating, I'm fat, I'm, like, really out of shape at this point. Wrapping my hand, I go to the store, get a Gatorade, and pack a new ports, and I go, all right, 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 right. Guys looking at me, I'm like, yeah, come on, come on, come on. Cops come, they're like, are you okay? So I'm like, ah, I'm fine, and the thing, the shirt goes, flying, <laughs> hands everywhere. They're like, you have to go to the hospital. I, like, I ain't going nowhere! I'm like, just out of my mind. My God. Nowhere! Oh, well, they grab me, and they take me to the hospital. So uh, then, my, then I went to the hospital, and everything got straightened. My DD Margie was lives in Florida. At the time, I didn't live in Florida. She does. But DD Margie came, helped me out, all that. My mother flew in, whatever. Uh, my phone was dead. I had no charger. I left everything in the room, like my bags, everything. You know what I'm saying? Right. So the only reason I asked you about that story was because at the time, you were, in my opinion, the face of Chikara Wrestling. Yeah. Which is a show for... Kids, pretty much. It's comic book. Yeah, yeah. It's like very cartoony, lighthearted, yeah, 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 yeah. early '90s WWE. Yeah, superstars. And yeah, 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 yeah. So, and then you have behind the scenes Eddie Kingston punching glass and. Well, also behind the scenes, it wasn't like all the car guys were saints. Really? Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, there was a lot of drunken nights, a lot of drinkers. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you guys see Chuck Taylor smashed all the time on these things, right? He was part of Chikara at one point, so... At one point? Yeah. yeah. But so, so... The I, boys are having fun after the show, you know what I mean? Relieve some stress. Yeah, for sure. And then, you know, I just went a little too far. How, were you relieved of your stress? I was until we went to the hospital. Jesus. And the best part was the woman trying to take my blood. And she's like, I can't find the vein. I'm like, I'm a little dehydrated. <laughs> oh my God. Just a little bit. So I said, when I say, sweetheart, I'm a little dehydrated. You know how it is, love I gave her a wink. But Didi March is like, I made eyes kiss stupido. Ay, why? Come on, bitch, hurry. Hurry up. Let's so how going. did you go? <laughs> how did you go from the face of the company and uh, what was the show you did at high high noon? Yeah. It was you and Quack. 
There he is. Yeah, yeah, main quad. Put your mask on at least. Come it's on. on. Oh, yeah. yeah All right, man. You don't derail it. <laughs> so you went from, that was the biggest show Chikara had done. Was it? I think so. Okay. One up. We're going with opinion. Can we scroll that down? Opinion. What Go was ahead. the biggest show though? I don't know. I don't pay attention. At least I thought it. You and Quack for the title. Yeah, that was fun. They crowned their first champion. Good story. From that, you disappeared eventually. And now you're not there. How did you go from being like the the go to? I literally thought like if they were in a shitty position, it was like that's all right. We got Eddie Kingston. They did that a lot. Uh no, I just went fucking uh whatever. It was a, I went crazy. Got into the fight. My phone was dead. I had no charger. No one could reach me. That was really it. And then no, but from that you from that the, I, I came back. There. I came back. Oh, yeah, you I mean, mean now? Yeah, yeah. Like oh, you mean years? You're not. Yeah, mean, yeah. No, no. Ah. Uh, Creative differences. Is that a good one? I didn't good? know. I didn't know people were allowed to disagree with Quack. Dude, I did a lot. He would call me. Uh, Why do you think Eddie was gone for four years? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true. No, uh, Quack has his ways, and I can't knock him. I can't. I can't. He's my trainer. One of my trainers. I don't want to knock him. He has his ways. You don't That's have it. to. I just want to know how you went. Okay, from so what? What happened to me was. What happened was, uh, I dropped the title, which was whatever, like I wanted to anyway. Yeah, it's wrestling. And then I had, a, uh, we did a real cool angle with Jimmy Jam Jacobs. You know what I mean? Everything was going good. Then I started feeling like I did everything here already. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, uh, my character in Chikar, which is me in real life, wouldn't team up with anybody unless it's like a close, close friend. And, and Chikar, and my character. Yeah, they're not booking Homicide. Yeah. They did once, and that was it. Yeah, yeah, twice, yeah. and that was it. You know, and I'm like, well, what? You know, I go, you know what? Let me put over one of the young guys that you're trying to push. You know, uh, then I signed with TNA, and uh, Mike. Not that he didn't like that. He was just kind of like, oh, that messes up my plans because, you know, you can't be on my shows. Like, no, certain shows I couldn't be on because TNA was taping. Oh, uh, okay. See what I'm saying? And then I was, yeah. like, I was gonna say that schedule is not. No, it's not. But like there was, a, you know how it is. Quack, is quack. so meticulous, right? Is that the yeah, right word? Mike, do, is that the right word? Thank you. Yeah. Mike's e my boy. Either do it all or don't do it. Yeah. So like, if I miss one show, it's like, oh, I gotta readjust it, and you're like, wait, dude, it's just one match. No, you don't like understand. OCD. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and yeah, you're like, you don't understand because this, this would have led to this, and that. I'm like, what? Would have led to huh? Yeah. So, it was just, we had an argument about one of the shows one day. Not really even an argument, because, like, I don't argue with him. It's like, he said something, I said, okay, I'm done. So, okay, like, so, so te he could message you today. He did, he messaged me a couple months ago. And I'd I was like, hey. I just didn't back. answer, I didn't want to go back. <laughs> you just said you guys are, like, okay, pretty much... Good terms, but no, no, of course, because it was business. It wasn't a yeah, personal. Yeah, it's not personal. No, 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 no. So, would you ever go back? No, because I did everything I could there. Why go back? I feel like if I go back there, I'm going backwards in my career. Fair enough. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how I felt sometimes when I go back to IW Mid South, but I'm helping Ian out. That was of, that was literally my next. Cause yeah, yeah. I wanted to go from t working with Quack. What was that like? Um, I had a very different relationship with Quack. A lot of guys. Well, he trained you. Yes, but even the guys he trained with had a very different relationship. In a sense of, I could express my opinions. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. He would. You, <laughs> you could get away with more than everyone else. No, not getting away with it. It wasn't like I was doing something bad. I was just expressing my feeling. Like I think that's dumb. So or, he respected you. Yeah. Or I don't want to do that. And it wasn't that I would go up to him like, "Hey, that's a dumb idea," and then leave it at that. I would go, "Hey, man, I think that idea is dumb. How about this?" I had something to back it up. Right. And then sooner or later, that's how it should be. Yeah, yeah, but you know, some guys don't. And then sooner or later, he'll be like, okay, I like your idea, but, and I'll be like, okay, that's cool, but, and then we come up with something we both like. Yeah, you collaborated. Yes. Um, a lot of, now I say a good percentage of time I went with what he said. You know what I mean? But there He's was, a smart guy. There were, there, were, there were moments, you know what I'm saying? But, uh. So other than that, working with him was fine. I had, I had fun because he made me laugh. You know, like his like manic craziness yeah, yeah, yeah. made me his laugh. Forks. Yeah, and what also made me laugh was everyone else who bitched and moaned about it, hmm. because they a lot of guys bitched and moaned, and never said nothing to them. So I'm like, okay, it's gonna stay the same way until you say something. Yeah, and then they're like, well, 
That's the, <coughs> they're that's like, the, well, we can't say nothing because we'll get fired. I go, then get well, fired. I was going to say that's the fear of not getting booked. Then get fired. Yeah. There's a million other bookings. Yeah. Go. If you're not happy, leave. Yeah. That leave. Was... I don't need to hear you. No one else needs to hear you. Like, if we'll hang out. Cool. You're my, you're my boy. You're my dude. But shut up. <laughs> because in all honesty, I remember some guys were bitching on about pay. And I was like, you know, the first three years of your car, I didn't get paid. Oh, for real? First three to four years of Chikara, I had to go to IW in Mid-South or all these other promotions that I was doing at the time to get paid. You got paid at IW in Mid-South? I did. <laughs> okay. I don't know about that. I did. There were moments though with me, Bryce, and my old partner, Blackjack, Bryce Rumsberg, and my old partner, Blackjack, would just look at the money he gave us and be like, Gotta go to gas. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where it all went. And that's when we would, uh, the funny story is uh, when Ian was married to Patty, who's a sweetheart. Yeah. She knew that he didn't give us enough money to, like, he gave us enough money to get home to New York, but not enough to, like, Well, dude, the eat. Dro- how far is like, that 12, drive? 12, 13. Yeah. But, uh, and we did that every month, like, twice a month. Yeah. I mean, twice, twi- yeah, twice a month. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was all just for wrestling, paying your dues. Like, uh-huh. we were like, this is indie. This is what paying your dues is. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I do work. I did that. Well, yeah, I remember. And um, he, uh, Patty would give us the hot dogs they would sell. She would give us like a bunch of hot dogs and a bunch of Mountain Dew and all that. So we used to make the joke of, all right, brother, Ian, rotten paydays. Yeah. Mountain Dew and a hot dog. Let's do it. You know, that was just hot dog and a handshake. A hot dog and a handshake. I had to be a mid special. Yep. But, uh, you know, she was a sweetheart, though, because she gave us that stuff for free. So we well, I was going to say, like, the, that company had heart. No, no, of course and it did. But that, Ian, Ian's a promoter. Like, a lot of people want to look I at Ian. I don't like, I don't not, like, you're diff- I you're don't different, like You're different, that. you're different, but not, let's go look at the percentages here, brother. A good percentage of promoters are scumbags. Not even scumbags are, won't pay you or try to do everything in their power to save 25 cents. You know what I mean? That benefits nobody but one, I, but one but person. themselves, yeah. and that's what they want to do. But a lot of promoters are like that. So when people bitch and moan about promoters, I'm like, what do you expect? Them I to I consider a promoter somebody that successfully hosts an event and everyone is happy and paid. That, uh, have you done that? Not everyone's happy with you. I don't give a shit. Exactly, <laughs> promoter. But I but promoter. But everyone, Brother, you just proved but my everyone point. gets paid. Look, he just proved my point, Brooke. But everyone gets paid. Right, Mike. Oh, I get paid. I know that. I don't know about Shane Saber, but I get paid. Everybody does. Everybody does. And poor Kobe Durst kid. From the lowest to the... T- and I don't think there should... And poor Kobe Durst kid Even if it's doesn't, doesn't get a dollar. Oh, my God. Poor kid. Gets his skin all beat up from chops. You just like from you. You told me to do that. No, I did not. You're the promoter. You told me to do that. There was no, there was no marking on the paper that said Eddie Kingston, please. I remember it said, it said of... Eddie, Kobe's not that good. Beat him up. That didn't. Did Period. Not say no, that. I know it didn't. I didn't, say that. I didn't say that. You should definitely check that match out. That was no. really good. Alpha One Duck. Okay, so we went through quack. I, promoting his own crap on here. <laughs> you don't like that's some bullshit. Huh? You're okay. You're okay with working with him. What was at high like? spots? What is it? God, you WM, WM, bro. Wrestling Network, right? That's what that means? Oh, Yo, snap. You're going to get one of these in a second if you keep fucking doing this. That means extended. Yeah, stretch that it out. A, yeah. That's not 99 of the business. Yeah. Best 999 of the business. That's all. Oh, hey, high, at High Spots WN, the best 999 in the business, huh? Get it now. I hope they cut. Anyways. So... Why Jesus. aren't you getting it now? Is, it, is that part of your show? You just do live rates for the for Oh the my god. In the middle of it? I, I, middle. I wish I had a little sign. It's like a mid-roll on a podcast, except it's by the company that's on. <laughs> you have to already subscribe to yeah, the yeah, yeah. fucking content you and, do a mid-roll for it. And I love how at the beginning you're like, I don't give a shit. I get a flat fee and I'm not gonna fucking promote no. it. No! But I'm also, uh, me and Mike, we get along. Mike's yeah, yeah, you guys had that training in Vegas. Like, yeah. You already, you already told me this story. Crazy training. So, oh, like, we can't even joke about that. Talk about social media nowadays. It was a joke. I can't even joke about that. Because oh, yeah. you know, I hate this and that. But, you know, there's no hate here for me, man. Very good. Anyway, so we covered Quack. You talked about not getting paid by Ian. Slash Is that beer? Paid by hot dogs. Dude, you are a fucking squirrel. <laughs> Dude, it looks like he has beer there. 
Is that beer? It is beer. All right. Go ahead. Do the ice outside. All right, my man. Get that oh, ice, my, though. Off my. All right. Oh my. What that mouth do, though? <laughs> Mike liked that one. Go ahead. This is a great first episode. This is awful. This is awful. All right. Anyways. I'm not a squirrel. Go ahead. So. <laughs> so back to Ian. Yeah. Other than getting paid in hot dogs and Mountain Dew. How was it like working for him? Great, it was fun. Learned a lot, a lot of great guys in the locker room. Terry Funk, Dusty Rhodes. Well, he brought in. Yeah, Chris Candido. Uh, guys like that, learning to Tracy Smothers, learning to Chris Hamrick. Right, all the names are coming to me, but. How many, you know, how many of those guys Steel. did you actually get to work with? I worked with Chris, which was awesome. I worked with uh, Tracy and Hamrick. You know what I mean? And uh, just a couple, probably all just incredible. Too Cold Scorpio. Like he put me with a lot of guys. And uh, just a great learning. You, you learned. Because that crowd's different than the East Coast crowd. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you got to learn like what that crowd likes. Because yeah. at the end of the day, we're there for the crowd. We're not marks for ourselves. We have to do things for And too, like at that time, DVDs were... Not even DVDs, VHS. Dude, by that th So I heard... They were selling I heard this crazy, crazy rumor that the at the time... Ian's worst show, like B show, n not that many names, minimum thousand yeah. DVDs. Yeah, a thousand at the time. Yeah, it was like at the time it was Ring of Honor was building steam, but the indie places was CZW and IWB Mid South was selling the most. I thought like just running the shittiest show, Thank a God. thousand. Yeah. Yo, you are Stone Cold. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Bam. So you were part of that like boom period. No, no, I, I came in right in the middle of it. Well, I didn't start it. No. You know? But uh, yeah, no, it was good. It was a fun time, man. Like like I said, Ace Steel was there too. He's a fucking genius, I think. You know, and it was just a lot of fun being around a lot of vets. You know, I was gonna say Super Dragon, but fuck that guy, right? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I got him snorting. I got him snorting off camera. Speaking of, <laughs> I'm like yeah. PWG. <laughs> yes, I did that. I did that before it was hot. Before it was popular. <laughs> and fun. A lot of great guys there. Now the real question is, why have you never been back? I'm not a uh, British, and I don't. Uh, what? You also what? broke the fucking microphone. Over that wasn't me. <laughs> I didn't throw it. I didn't throw the microphone. Okay, tell us who story. broke At the least microphone. Tell the story. Who broke the microphone? This off-camera conversation. Who broke Eddie. the microphone? Tell the story. It was on my head. Tell, Tell the story. story. Oh, Chris Hero. I don't like him. So I felt like he was trying to bury me after a match after I sold the the forearm for him. Yeah, it's called a roaring elbow. Rolling, rolling. So he did it, and then he starts cutting some dumb promo, and I was like, really? You going to do this? So I popped up and started swinging on him. He had the microphone, and he broke the microphone over my head. Then why are we being shown off camera that it was you smashing it on your own head? The way he made it look. Go ahead. Hold on, we're coming. Are you coming to a mic? The, uh, the shotgun mic. Down there. Oh. Just stand up. Stand yeah, so, just. Uh, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was because you started legitimately strangling Hero. Like you put your your hands around his Adam's apple. <laughs> you're, 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 you're trying to kill him. You're trying to murder him. Like, yeah, wouldn't that be good for DVD sales? <laughs> well, no, because all the evidence would then be confiscated by the police. Uh -huh. It would be state's evidence. Uh -huh. And so we couldn't sell it. And so Hero, out of a flight or flight reflex, started breaking the microphone over your skull. Yeah. But your skull is so thick that it actually broke the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> so technically... And they made Hero pay for it the next day. So technically yeah. he's... He went to Guitar Center. Oh, he paid for it? Yeah. So then how, you ended up paying for it in the long run, though. That's fine. I had fun there. Is that really the reason why uh, uh, Super D won't hit me up? I don't know. He's, he's a mistake. He's a, yeah, yeah, he's, 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 he's a, yeah, he is. That's a nice way of putting it. But no, but you know what? Though? I thought <laughs> I, I, I legit got nervous that that was the reason. I don't know. I know. I, I know. Honestly, I hit up uh, Super D once in all these years. And nothing. No return. It's okay. I'm not mad about it. I didn't say you were. I just. I, was I also don't. I in my opinion, I don't fit. What PWG is about right now. What is that? 
Um, like athleticism and like craziness. Like if I go in there, dude, just, I don't know anyone crazier than you. I just punch and kick. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'll do a couple suplexes and a little bit of old Japan '90s stuff, right, brother? Yeah. And that's it. I'm right near you. You can talk. To I know, me. but that's my man. Too, <laughs> You know I, mean? I wish he had his hood right now. It would be dope to get him in there. Yeah. But, uh... Well, that would suck because we'd have to pay him and then that means... You less. gotta pay him, not me. What? So, I already got my money. <laughs> I get mine regardless, right? I'm like... Jesus. Cheers. So... So, anyways... Yeah, uh, but no, but that's it. But it was a lot of fun. I had a blast teaming up with a human tornado. You know what I mean? It was just fun, man. And there's a lot of dudes I like. Who I'm um, kind of pissed didn't catch on elsewhere. Because uh, I, I was a big human tornado fan. I think that that was his own fault. You know what I mean? With certain situations that I don't know that popped up. So. That's fair. But no, it was a lot of fun out there, man. I had a blast. Would I love to go back? Yeah, sure. But again, I don't think I fit. So I'm trying to... If they see that I fit in somewhere, then they'll hit me up. If they want you, they'll hit you up. You know? So you don't believe in contacting promoters? No, I do. But I tried, and that was it. All right. You know fair. Uh, I'm just going through all the big ones that you've mm-hmm. that you've done. Uh, Ring of Honor. Yeah, it was fine. No, no, no. We're not we're not glossing over this one. Cause no, uh, Ring of Honor. Because <laughs> when there I is, there is when I one. when I did it with Gabe, it was fine. I did one oh, show. Oh, thank you for bringing him up. Yeah, it was fine. <laughs> so how was it? He he was not really a big fan of mine of my work. That's just the way it is. You know what I mean? I've gotten you know for a fact. I did that. No, no, it's not for a fact. But that's what. Well, I, I was gonna say. Did it, what did he say? Did he say? No, he didn't say nothing. I am not a fan of your work. You think he would say that? Like to my face. I don't no. know. I have a text message in my phone from Gabe saying, "Yeah, but it wasn't you." I'm face. lucky that he put yeah, up but it my wasn't two your star face. matches. It was. So I mean, he that's said he dope. said so. That's pretty funny. Yeah, that's pretty funny. But not to your face where you can grab him. No. You know what I mean? So no. No. Uh, it's, it was fine. And then the HD net days were cool because I was with Adam Pierce's booking, and I and I love Adam Pierce. Is, when when did you do the title match? With Steam, that was Sinclair. Okay, so, like go the, so go through the three stages then, because three stages of hell. <laughs> you did you so you did Gabe, and I did Pierce, and then and then I did Sinclair, Sinclair years, yeah, and that was when Delirious. Yeah. Okay, so go back to Gabe. So when Gabe you was in, I did Cage of Death, and then I did something else with. So Jigsaw. that was that was only when the CZW against CZW. Okay. Ring of was facing CZW. I did that. Me to me. So I don't even know if I was a wrestler yet. Sorry to like Go ahead. age you here, but uh, that for me was like peak indie fan. I hate you. Yeah, so much. That was one of the coolest angles at the time, where they both ran on the same day. Yes, in the, in the arena. Mm-hmm. So you were part of that whole thing, and you were in mm-hmm. the cage of death. Mm-hmm. Can you go through that? Because uh, the funny story was, uh, I remember Jim Cornette was in the back, and you got to remember CZW at the time was all. Blood and guts and chair shots to the head and yep. fire and but they also had hero yeah no I understand that but Claudia. like like we all knew how to take certain things you know, <laughs> certain, what, do you, what do you mean like what so what fucking skill is involved in taking a chair shot to the head oh we all knew Cause, we, cause. you didn't know how to you knew no, you that just you did it could yeah did exactly it. so Cornette so don't, don't Cornette get, comes up to there's me. gonna be like a fucking sixteen year old kid in here and be like wow there must be a different way to take a chair shot yeah nowadays with your hands up Jesus. or with your back nowadays uh, or just don't do it uh, so Jim Cornette comes up to me and I and I love Cornette I know a lot of people hate him I think he's hilarious motherfucker. I think he's hilarious. <laughs> Double cheese! I think he's awesome. Uh, okay. Fucking, uh, he had this piece of wood and he drilled into it, like the bottom of it, so it would break. And he's trying to tell me how to take it. I'm like, yeah, man, I, I, I get it. He's like, no, you know what I'm saying? You gotta take it like this. And I'm like, no, I, I know how to take it. Don't worry, I got it. Okay, right, motherfucker, take it. Baby. So Homicide came in, wiped me in the head with it and broke everywhere. Did my Terry Funk cell, and that was it. But it was a lot of fun because they did the angle with me and Hero. Like, yeah. Because me and Hero at CZW were feuding for like three years. So at some point in the match, Hero did something. I looked at Hero, smacked him, spit on me. He smacked me, you know, pushing each other back and forth. And honestly, people don't just think this because I'm friends with Like, he's my best friend. But I was at Madison Square Garden when Stone Cold came out for SummerSlam 98. Yeah. And, like, I legit felt the garden shake. Yeah. That's how loud the pop was. So it, this pop is not anything like that, but being in the middle of the ring when Homicide's music hit, 
when he was coming out to help Ring of Honor or whatever it was, yeah. dude, like my ears were like, like people cared. Like they were so dude, into that, that was a different that, time, dude. It was fucking insane how loud that was. Like I had, I had legit goosebumps in the ring. Like oh my god, that fuck. was that was what's up? People went insane. So he came out and did his thing. Later on, he that brought, was a different Ring of Honor man. No, I was. And then he brought me in to do something with Jigsaw with the Vulture Squad or something, and it just didn't work out. Didn't pan out the way he liked it. And that was it. Uh, then Gabe was gone. Pierce hit me up and was like, hey, we're doing HGNet. We need talkers. Finally, Ring of Honor got TV. We need talkers. Cool. Bet. I'm going to put you with Hero. Mm, great. So, whatever. Get paid. And it was fun. We, we did that, uh, I guess, the highlight of that time. First off, Adam Pierce, one of the greatest human beings I've ever met in my life. Yeah. Honestly. Also, real honest with me. And one of the best talkers. Yeah. Oh, pff, oh without a fucking. So I don't even have to bring that up. But uh, he said um, he was real honest with me. Like one of the few honest guys in wrestling. After I was done with my feud with Hero, he was like, hey, we just don't have anything. I was like, okay, cool. At least it's not like. Because he was honest. Yeah. About yeah, yeah. It. You know, it wasn't like, oh, yeah, we'll That's, get, That is lost we'll get, in wrestling. We'll get you down the road. Yeah. Or something. Like, no, you're not. That is just lost in wrestling. Down the road, and I'm waiting two years. Like, hey, man. No. No, and he was honest, and I'll never forget that. That's why every time I see Pierce, he gets the biggest hug, the biggest, you know, handshake, all that. Uh, even okay. though he probably doesn't want it. You need to go back to Hero, though, because... So I had the few... No, no, hold on. I need to tell a story of when you and Hero wrestled each other in Cleveland. You guys, oh, okay. You guys were both backstage. Yeah. And I forget whose music played first. Heroes. <laughs> I, know, I know what story you're going with. So... They're both looking at each other. I don't know. I, I came up at the perfect time. Like, literally, it was like, he, here's music playing. I walked up the stairs. I turn around. I see them, like, pretty face much to face. face to face, like, nose to nose. Not I'm, talking. They're about to fucking fight be, behind the curtain. And it was just them staring at each other. Hero slapped Eddie. Eddie slapped Hero. And Hero went, all right, and walked out the curtain. Yeah. And I was like, that was it. What the fuck did I just see? It was the, uh, you know, the Japanese thing. Where you give you know each other the spit whatever. Fucking Anoki slap. Anoki slap. That's no one slapped him back. No, but that was Anoki. I'm not oh, smacking Anoki. Anoki's for the power. Yeah, <laughs> Anoki kills people. With okay, slaps. but so what is what? Where, Thank you for being because I would have forgotten. Anoki. What is this relationship though? So you guys wrestle each other? With, what? We don't like each Pretty, other. Yeah. You uh, just said he's your best fucking friend. Uh huh. Hero. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, you were talking. You were sorry. You were talking about homicide's entrance. Do you, Dude, no, like he fucking misplaced his... Yeah, yeah he's... His mom can you get in there? Yes. Put on your hood and get in there, man. Oh, my God. Anyway. Jesus Can H. you forward Eddie's pay to me? Thank no. You. Uh, we don't like each other. We respect each other in the ring. You see what I'm saying? And we know that we bring out the best out of each other. So No one can have a match with Hero like I can. I'm gonna... It's the truth. I would never... I don't care... What, in what scenario I'm in. Mm -hmm. If I don't actually like somebody, no matter how good of a chemistry I have, I would never, one, let someone slap me in the face backstage or slap somebody in the face backstage. We were just getting amped up and ready to go. It was our first match since he, to, together since he got released at that time. I was just ready to go. When he did it, I said, yeah. Remember Josh said, told you that side of the story? Dude. I went, yeah. And I pointed. Yeah. It was the most psychotic thing I've Ever nah, it's not psychotic. Anoki's not nuts. Well, a little bit during the what two thousands? <laughs> oh my god! Right? Anoki's Anoki completely Anoki insane. Yeah, the Anokiisms. Anoki fucking oh, yeah. embezzled money from New Japan to start a fucking perpetual motion uh, power plant. You know that? You know no. that? Yeah. Think about that. It's fucking insane. <laughs> only, I only it's know, know folks. It's I only know uh, Dwayne. No, in him for years. No, in him for years too. So go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, that's the thing with me and Hero. He was there for a lot of that. Yeah. Fucking uh, at, uh, Ride Playland. You know, <laughs> yeah. fucking take a day out, yeah. day out in a fucking uh, on the Hudson River. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys like by the end of the day would be at each other's fucking throats. Yes, yeah. motherfucker. Screaming. At so each why other. do you hate each other? Ah, uh, I put it to you like this. We had a friendship. The friendship fell through. Well, you guys I, what started out relatively same time. He no no no. He became, he was my trainer. Oh. He came in the train. He helped me actually go to IWM Mental. Okay. So no, it's just real simple, man. We became friends, got close, actually lived together for a little bit in PA. Uh, some things went down that I don't want to talk about because yeah. that's his business. 
But other people have probably said it in other shoot interviews, so they'll put two and two together. And you can get those other interviews at highspots.com. <laughs> <laughs> I think they can probably best, edit it in. Best 999. <laughs> best 999. Just go, to the, go to the little button about up here and go to the related videos. <laughs> related videos. <laughs> But they don't have the custom videos anymore. Mike, get on that, brother. Yeah, yeah, for you. And yes. I still sell old Japan, New Japan stuff, so can you. So, so now we were friends, and I have a thing with my friends, and I told you this. If I'm your friend, publicly, I will not bury you. You could be the worst person in the world. Okay. Publicly, I'd be like, nah, eat the pages, my man. Yeah, yeah, okay, maybe he did the, I don't know. Privately, I'd be like, you stupid motherfucker, what is wrong? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That to me is friendship. He all didn't do that for me. When he was doing some dirt publicly, I was like, no, not hero. Uh, uh. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I was so going So you had his back. When I was going through certain things, and certain things happened. He was just like, yep. He was Eddie. like, well, Eddie, blah, 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 blah. And I said, oh, fuck you. Uh, and that, that's how it ended. But we had chemistry. So how life. do you go from, uh, how do you, dude, like, I don't know if I just. I'm an a extremist. No, 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 no. I don't even. I don't know if it's just a, I reach a point in my career. Like if there was someone like that that I had that relationship with, and I was booked to wrestle them, I would just be like, yeah, I'm not doing that show. I know I have good matches with Hero, and I also like hitting him, and he likes hitting me. Let's be honest about it. We beat the shit out of each other. In those yeah. Matches. Yeah. And people enjoy them, and that's it. I I tell you right now, if someone comes in here right now and says Eddie. Uh, you have one match to do to, so to look good or whatever, and they're like, you have cash as all no, <laughs> right? Ko, uh, stupid, right? <laughs> like how do you not laugh? How do you not laugh? Because you know what I mean. He, <laughs> he, he <laughs> names himself Cassius because you know Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali hated that name Cassius because that was his slave name. That's why he named him to my anyway. Hey, it's his slave name in WWE. I don't know if he's asleep. No, he's kidding. getting paid. I'm yeah. just kidding. Wow. Just, yeah, wow. Yeah. Uh, Chris, Chris Hero, Roderick Strong, out on the plantation, just like <laughs> picking cotton. That's what these guys are doing now. Apparently. Well, he he's the page. Pay. You well, heard it here first, folks. Yeah, Millionaire. High Spots Wrestling Network. <laughs> best 999 <laughs> in the business, y'all. And we ain't picking cotton. That's a waste. I remember, I remember I went out oh, for dinner. Can I talk? So. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold on. I went out for dinner with uh And <laughs> Wait, so, you can't you gotta so, bleep it. Don't you have to bleep his yeah. name out? <laughs> Mr. You have to, Black. Right? I went out for dinner with Mr. Mr. George Class. <laughs> and someone was said his his real name and he goes, whoa. Don't use my fucking slave name. Yeah, of course you would say that. that right? a, yeah, what a sweetheart. Forever. What a sweetheart. God bless him. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so that name got edited out. Way to go, Mike. Way to black that out. Uh, anyway, like, the guy, if Hero walk in here, or who's the top indie guy right now? Keith Lee, let's say. Okay. And they're like, Keith Lee and Chris Hero, you have to wrestle one of these guys. But you know you have chemistry with one of them. But that's the thing. No matter how much I don't like him, no matter how much he doesn't like me, okay, we're so also grown now. It's not like a deep hatred. You know what I mean? It's just like we see each other, hey, hey, and that's it. You know? It's not like, oh, ooh, it's just, hey, hey. I would go with Hero. And I mean, also, he's one of the best, like, right, we have to ever. Also, we also have to have trust with each other. Like, I know he's going to hit me, but I know he's not going to paralyze me. He knows I'm gonna beat the shit out of him, but not paralyze him. Well, because I was gonna say, if you legitimately hate each other, and I, when you say no, because that's when taking you say, advantage. That's when you say advantage. I believe you for mm -hmm. sure, but if it like if there's that much like gripe, if it was that much gripe, it wouldn't be in the ring. It would be out in the street. But again, this is part of the business. You have to work with people you don't like. For sure. Yeah, I've seen you. Work. Oh, I, I I've, I've worked just, with yeah. lots of people. I don't yeah, know. I've seen you. But hate each other. You say the, the there was a lot of hate. We hate each there other. There was a lot of hate, but we knew. And Hero can admit this or not. He couldn't have the kind of matches he had with me with anyone else. Where it was believable. I, where people yeah. were were there for every hit. Every I, I watch a lot of wrestlers now pretend and redo spots that like you guys do. Really? It's just not there. Like. No, I'm just saying like that. Uh, no, I'm just saying, you know, my low self-esteem. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's like that, like fake emotion. Like when you guys have a, like a strike off and end up nose to nose, it's like, there's like that, I don't know, intangible energy. Whereas like guys are just repeating that. You want to pick that up, Mike? No, don't edit this. Nope. 
Huh? I was too concerned Stretch about it. Stretch it out, brother. <laughs> Stretch it out. Well. So anyway, yeah, it's the real shit. Yeah, it happens. Anyway, go ahead. What was next? Uh, I ruined it. I really ruined it. I'm sorry, man. You, everybody's making a great point. And here I am, worried about these fucking technical considerations. Trying to make your show sound good. <laughs> well, at least you make it look good. Hey, thanks. <laughs> Doing this fucking You want to tell them a story about me and you? When you used to live in White Plains, New York, brother? What about? Yeah, you lived in New York? Out. I lived in New York. White Plains, Westchester. Yeah, Westchester County. Yeah. I'm not a fucking... I'm not, I'm not living in the city, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. fun times. Good times. Miss those days. I actually do. I actually miss yeah, those days. No, because I used to see you every month, yeah, all, all the, the time. time. Yeah, it was good. Man. Yeah, that's what happens in wrestling, though. Like, you'll see people constantly, and then one day it's like, and you don't I mean, see them for like a year and a half. That's what that's what makes the, these kind of weekends so special, is because it's like a reunion. Like, fucking last night. I mean, not that anybody here in this room is friends with Jerry Lawler. But it's like, you had Jerry Lawler, Minoru Suzuki, Pentagon, like all in the same fucking room. Yeah, you're kind of like, yeah, what is this? Yeah, yeah what is this world? It's like, yeah. true. Yeah. I mean, that's like the magic of WrestleCon, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is this like... The best nine ninety nine. dollars Sorry, Mike. You guys are filming WrestleCon, right? So yeah. Yeah. But also the best. Do you want to tell a gig story? Oh, all right. So this idiot. It's just uh, we're doing a dog collar match at uh, AIW. First time he's gigging. They asked ever, ever. They asked me, and I didn't want to. You take a bunch of aspirin. Oh, they were like, take aspirin. Here's a couple beers, and he did whatever. So anyway, he's going to everyone like a nervous child, Mike. Hilarious, nervous child, Rook. Awesome, and he's going. How do, how do I do it, do I Go like that, do I? How do I do it? I go, come in. You're working with me. Come in. You poke and you twist, and then you squeeze like when you were a kid. Hold your breath and just, you know what I'm saying? Maybe give one, two, you know, a little bit. Okay. I, okay. You're, come on, you're, come you're on. You're exaggerating Oh, He's absolutely really not. Marrying you on yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you asked for that, you know what I mean? So, for real, God. Every time I see court, uh, every time I see Stokely. What up, God? What's the mathematics? He's the only one that gets it. Anyway, it's a mood type thing. Uh, so we're going into the match and I'm hammering you with the chain and we go to the spot where it's time for you to gig. Pussy little gig. Your first one, your first one was a little, you were nervous, I give you that. He goes, how is it? That's how he sounds to me. You didn't sound like, this is how you sounded to me. <laughs> like, what an asshole, man. Right? Like, this, this, this is looking, how you sound looking, to me. Looking, looking up to me like I'm Jesus holding you. <laughs> looking up at me like this, Mike. Yeah, 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 we're doing it, right? How's it look? Yes, that's how it sounded. That's how it sounded. So I go, you got nothing, brother. You got nothing. So now I'm knuckling him. <laughs> Trying to get some color out of that spot. With a chain. With a chain. <laughs> uh, old school, baby. Probably hurting your own knuckle more than Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Protecting him. He goes, okay, okay. He goes. Now the idiot <laughs> goes, instead of poke and twist a little bit, like I told him, he pokes and turns it like a key. Yeah, all the way. Dude, he has like this little, no, it's not deep. It's just like a little, you want to show the camera? Yeah, you got a notch. You want to show the camera real quick? It's like a little Harry Potter skull. Uh, it's Harry Potter, if, if Harry Potter made a fuck, it took a, Harry! if he took a melon baller to his fucking forehead. <laughs> Harry, you take this metal ball to your head. Harry. It's really almost, <laughs> it's really almost butterbeer. All that jazz, butterbeer. Butter beer. So, this is a Slytherin motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eddie, mean, you are so Slytherin. Mm. Hi, Nixon. Put that out there for him. Uh, so anyway, he, now he's gushing. Now he's gushing blood. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> all right, we got something going. And I'm fucking wailing. All I start hearing is, oh, God. <laughs> that is not, that is not true. Stop. Stop. That is not true. That's, oh, God. That's all I hear is, Oh god, it's a lot of blood. <laughs> I'm going, Eddie. Okay, Eddie. He's new. He's the first time he came. Relax. You're okay. Eddie. Eddie. I'm like, you're all right. I start choking him with the chain. I'm like, all right, squeeze a little bit. Squeeze. He goes, oh god, it's in my eyes. Eddie, am I okay? Am I, I did, okay. I did ask him if I was okay. <laughs> I did ask him about that. I was a fucking doctor. Yeah, it's because he's a fucking paramedic. Well, dude, yeah, Davey Richards over here <laughs> resuscitated people. 
It, it was Eddie, a lot of like blood. This, like this, like this, Eddie, it, it's in my eyes. Am I, am I okay? And I'm like, is this motherfucker really? Yeah, you're fine. Then it was I a lot of blood though. It was a lot of blood, but not enough for you to die. Then I go, I know that, that's what I got the like, peach. Well, obviously. I, obviously. <laughs> Still here, still here to do this cereal yeah. show. So, going at it, going at it. And uh, I started becoming like a certain friend because you really started kind of freaking out a little well, bit. Well, yeah, because like, it was like Vince McMahon levels of like, oh, tr- yes, it was. It's not that bad. Oh, yeah. it wasn't. It was like maybe a three on the Muda scale. No his, way. His, his scale is Vince yeah, McMahon. My, not Muda, not Great Muda. Kabuki. My, we'll let that go. <laughs> Mine's the Vince McMahon scale. Yes, but I'm, you could oh, see those guys. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, on high I was just I was just on a show with Muda in Japan in front of five thousand people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. and it took about five thousand people for you to realize that was Muda. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, like, oh, that's who they're saying. Oh, wow. I oh, did. That makes so much sense. No, that's who Eddie was talking about. Oh, oh my daddy's that night. Oh, oh. I hate oh, you. The oh, oh, the guy got it. Oh, oh, the power elbow. Oh, oh you fucking jerk. Anyway. <laughs> So he's bleeding, then I become a concerned friend. And I start going, you're fine, are you dizzy? No, you'll be okay, don't worry about it. And I'm just beating him up while he's still acting. Are you dizzy? Let me punch you with this chain. Yeah, yeah. Are you dizzy now? Let me <laughs> choke you with the chain. How do you feel? Are you lightheaded? Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you said, now don't act tough. Because we went to the back after the match was done. It was a decent match, good brawl. And you're like, yo, thank you so much. For being there, cause like I wouldn't have been able to, you know what I mean, dude. I was freaking out. Yeah. So he was. Being I don't bully. I don't think I said. Oh God. Like. <laughs> like a child, Mike. Like a child. I had him. <laughs> oh God. That's a. That's a lot of blood. Oh my God. I'm just I was like. Okay. That's not true. It's so true. But I was fucking. You were freaking out. I was freaked. But I was being a good friend, and I was like, "Are you dizzy?" Do you want to go home? I know I'm fine. That was it. But you, <laughs> I'm 99 percent sure I asked you how does it look. I said looks good. You're like right. looks good, and then it started getting in my eyes, and I was like, "Am I okay?" <laughs> no, 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 you didn't do it like that. Oh, oh god, that's a lot of blood. It's in my eyes. Am I okay? Oh my god, I, said, I, hate, I hate you so much. This guy X. I went. What the fuck? <laughs> What? How did we get here? We weren't even finished talking about Ring of Honor. Oh, I did a match with Hero. I, that's probably the highlight was the fight with Arana where he Gonzo bombed me basically. Oh, that was on the, the on the guardrail. Yeah, their first eye paper. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember he did that. It was just mistiming. It wasn't. That was the finish, right? No, the finish was the back fist afterwards. He did it, and I landed, and he gave me like a second to recoup because it was like out of nowhere. It was no one's fault. It was just bad timing. He covers me, one, two, I kick out, I go, you're fucking dead. He hits the ropes, I swing that back fist as hard as I could. It's good times. Uh, then that's when Pierce said, no, you gotta go. Well, we don't have nothing for you. Cool, bet. Homicide gets released from TNA, goes to Ring of Honor, he wants to do the Outlaw Inc. gimmick. We go, when Hunter's there now booking. We go there, uh, already. Well, cause for, you guys got like, pseudo vignettes. Well, we the didn't, we didn't, yeah, we didn't yeah, yeah, ourselves. Yeah. So, uh, it was just bad off the, off Jump Street. When this one dude, I don't know who he is, so I don't want to say a name, and it'd be the wrong person, but um, he's one of the higher ups at Sinclair. Goes to Homicide to shake his hand, and he goes, and you are, oh my God. And I went, <laughs> like, I wanted, a former Ring of Honor champion. Yeah, a guy, a guy who helped build yeah. what you bought. Yeah, you know, so. one of the pillars of this company. So Homicide's like, motherfucker, <laughs> who the fuck is that? <laughs> what that means? Eddie, I'm pissed. I'm pissed. I said, so am I, motherfucker. So that started the whole thing. So and good. Then, and then it was just a bad experience. You know what I mean? And did we do wrong? Oh, yeah. Getting drunk in the airport and dropping elbows on... Mark Briscoe in the airport, of course. Oh my God. Well, Joe Koff said, yeah, that was a bad move by us. But it just started off bad. It just started off bad. And it just went bad from there. And I think Truth Mart- uh, Martini uh, put it the best. He goes, well, these guys, when you bring guys like me and Homicide in, you know what you're getting. Like, there's nothing fake about it. Like, we are what we are. You know, so just give us guidelines and we'll follow them. We'll push them. 
<laughs> to see how far we can go. But we'll follow. So you guys had that, but then you all you also did uh, pay per view or whatever I pay per view building to you and Steen. Yeah, that was before that. That was before that. Same time period. Two thousand eleven. Right? How was that? So like you you would just come Chicago? in. You would come in and then leave. Yeah, that's I didn't care. We you like Abdul the butcher. <laughs> Pop the territory. So he leaves right when we're talking about Abby. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying, though. Like, when I first taught him that, he didn't know who Abby was. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's he not goes, true. I cut a promo once at AIW, Mike, right? And I'm saying, I'm the Abdullah, the butcher of indie wrestling. Because you bring me in, I bring the houses up, and then I leave. And then I come back later to bring them back up. Who's Abby? Oh, I, you, okay. These are called shoot interviews, not lie interviews, but it's cool. Sure. Who's Abby? Continue. The butcher, who's that? Is that Nickel Butcher's brother? I'm telling you. Anyway. <laughs> Fucking guy. Is that Necro Butcher's brother? Yeah, that's what you thought. Uh, anyways. So, <laughs> butcher is the Christian name. <laughs> <laughs> Passed down from generation to generation. Um... No, uh, the Steam thing was because Chikara was working with Ring of Honor. Yeah, they were doing that syndicate thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were whatever. And they wanted me and Steam. Which is an obvious... Yeah, but it sucked. Like, it sucked because there was too much backstage stuff. Not with me and Steam. Me and, me and Kevin are cool. We just wanted to do our own thing, but it was like... It was like Ring of Honor needed Steam to look like this. Chikara needed me to look like this. Ring of Honor didn't want Steam to do that. Chikara didn't uh, want me to do that. So, da -da 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 -da. Yeah. So, so then it became... Wouldn't it be a natural fit, though, for Chikara to kind of bend at the knee for... Ring of Honor? I don't bend for nobody. Okay. You said it wasn't you. You said it was... The... Oh, that's right. <laughs> No. It was, yeah, no, it would, because Ring of Honor is bigger than Chicago. Right. Yeah, of course. They but, were getting the rub from... But, again, certain youth look at it like that. Other people didn't, so that was it. And so you guys did the match? We did two matches, and then it sucked. It, both of them sucked, because we were so limited in what we could do. In the ring? It was like, uh, Eddie can't take this, or Kev has to look like this. Like, when I went over on him at Chicago, it was like I had to accidentally win. And I'm like, I'm the champ here. What do you mean accidentally? Yeah, like, I put I put I put him over clean as yeah. you know what I mean. But me and Steam worked something out, and it was fine. What was the finish? Like a back fist, like out of nowhere, but accidentally. I, I, you I fell on him. You were both. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was whatever. But I loved working. He was easy to work with. Uh, I, I was the same. Yeah. Loved working with him. But no, it could have definitely been a lot better. You know what I'm saying? So. And then yeah. it led to nothing. No, no, I didn't want it. It was alright. Dude, some people, you have to understand something. And I appreciate It's just frustrating for I me because I, I know the value of. Thank you. I appreciate that you see the value in me. I appreciate other people see that. You know what I mean? And that's why when I do go out there, I joke around and say, I don't work hard. And you know I do. When I go out there, I work hard for those people because they see and believe in me. Right. Not everyone's going to believe in you, not everyone's going to see your value. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people look at me and they go, he's just a talker, he can't do nothing else. Other people see me as just a storyteller in the ring, not even a decent talker. Some people see the whole thing. You know? Like I said, I, like, I, man, look, again, three things confident in. I can talk, I can tell a story, I can make you feel something. Because everything I do is real. It's, it's from somewhere. Right. It's real. It's from inside me. That's it. Not everyone's going to feel it, though. So, you know, that was Ring of Honor, and I wasn't, it's not me knocking them, knocking these guys who did it. I didn't wear suits and ties to Ring of Honor. Because Ring of Honor was Ring of Honor. It wasn't like fucking WWE. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They didn't like that. They didn't like that I would sit there and go, that's stupid. You know? Yeah. They had their favorites for a reason. But there they is, played the game. There is, a, there is kind of like a, a nod in seeing the fact that even though they always end up stop using you, they always come back. That is true, I guess. You know what I, mean? I don't look I look at it as a payday. <laughs> like, I don't look at it as anything else at this point in my career, you know? People ask me, hey, do you want to go back to Ring of Honor? Yeah, sure, they pay me. Hey, you want to go back to Impact? Yeah, they pay me. Hey, you want to go to WWE? Yeah, they pay me. What about Gabe? Yeah, pay me. Uh, you know what I mean? Quack, pay me, but he won't. So it's not like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's even an option. No offense, it's just the truth. And, like, you know, my goal still to this day, the market me, still wants to go to all Japan. 
I know it's not number one. I know New Japan is number one, but just the mark and my first goal ever was to go to World Japan. So it's still in there in me. It's possible. Yeah, you know, yeah, I would love to. That's like, and I don't know. I'll do that, and I'll be like, I'm out of here, and just get the fuck out of Dodge. That's so Leave on a fucking high point. You are full of shit. You're the guy that's been trying to quit for ten years. Because it seems like I try to quit, and then something fucking pops up where I'm like, oh, okay, I'll give it a try. You know? Do we have, what do we have, five more minutes? Yeah, and I got a couple, uh... Oh, you want us to bring this out? So anyway, at High Spots WN, <laughs> the best $9.99 you'll ever spend. I've... Oh my god, that rhyme, Mike! There it is, brother. I want to thank Excalibur for coming in. Oh, can you let me do this? Uh, I, you're not ending the show. Oh, okay. Anyways, so... Uh, at uh, All Ego... No, no. It's at Official... Ego, but uh, I my favorite thing about shooting interviews is word association. Oh, this is such bullshit. Nine man. times out of ten, someone will say something awful. Kingston and Hideki Suzuki. You know Suzuki from Big Japan. Yeah. That's a good match. Somebody should book that. There yeah. you go. There no, should be a. Hear it. You say there it. should be a lot of people booking me for a certain match. Repeat the match. Repeat the match. Repeat the match. You and Hideki no, no, no. I want to. No, we can hear it from back here. Good. Excalibur wants want to see Hideki Suzuki versus Eddie Kingston. You heard that? I want a second motor. Ah, uh, bro, I just spent five weeks in Japan. So, I mean, my Japanese is pretty dope. Hey, can we get some Mizu over here? That's water, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, word association. First thing that comes to mind, this is not just you saying one thing. You can say a sentence or two or go on an Eddie Kingston rant. Don't touch my ink, yeah. Thank you. First one. You ready? I guess so. Sammy Callahan. It's supposed to be fast. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sammy Callahan's hated because he's doing things that everyone else wants to do, but are either A, aren't good enough to do it, or B, too scared to try it. So he's right. hated for being top one of the top two, like making people believe in being a top two. Okay. So, <laughs> can't say that name no more. Is that it? All right, That's a, low key. Uh, one of my close friends, one of the most talented guys to ever be in pro wrestling. Former three-time IWGP Junior Champion. Uh, the only guy I know that can get away with basically murder and still get booked somewhere because he's so talented. I wish I had this. Me and Rocky Romero were talking about this yesterday. I wish I had this much of his talent. There's like a. No it's so ridiculous how good he you is. Can't, it really is. He, it, there's like an intangible trained uh, by homicide aura too. about him. Yeah, he's low key. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah he's low key. Uh, Josh Alexander. I don't want to say underrated because I appreciate him, but once he gets everything settled, like visa wise and stuff, will be he's blowing up. I thought he'd blow up before. He'll blow up again. Yeah. One of my favorite opponents. You know that because you Me book too. it all the time. Yeah. I I have a blast with him. Uh, Jimmy Jacobs. One of the smartest guys in pro wrestling ever. And I owe him a lot. He was the reason why I got my tryout originally. He was the first, he was the first person to put the, the ball in motion. So, I owe Jimmy, I love Jimmy. Like, legit love him as a person. Right. So, love you Jimmy Jim. Uh, Necro Butcher. Uh, one of the most underrated performers ever. Really smart. People just think he's a death match guy. No. He's like a legit genius. Did yeah. he win the lottery recently? I heard he won the lottery. No, not the lottery. Not lottery I heard he won like the fantasy baseball. Races or something? Fantasy baseball. Fantasy baseball. I was close. Horse racing. <laughs> that's not close. It's not, yeah, swinging a bat, riding a horse. Two different things. Anyway, no. Oh, that polo that you just described. <laughs> polo, the guy in the shirt. Anyway, the brand. Right? Get it? Oh, I forget. You're Canadian. So, no, he's on the, very smart in the ring. Got me over so many times just by working with him in the ring, you know what I mean? So, no, great guy. I think he's awesome. Uh, Brian Danielson. Oh, overrated. Jesus. I'm joking. I'm joking. Jigsaw? Hold on. No, I'm not letting you finish. I just... Brian, I, I, that's it. That's it. That's all you get to say. All right. We're Brian Danielson. Word association. Brian, Brian Danielson. Danielson. Brian Danielson along with Homicide, Samoa Joe, CM Punk, Cole Cabana, Low Key, all that stuff. Brum, Ring of Honor in the Indies. Up to a different level that this is why we're at where we're at today. The, this is the reason I became an indie wrestler. Yeah. Just all the guys that um, And I'm made. so happy for him that he's coming back, I guess, right? Or something. Yeah. He is? Sunday. Good. Yeah. WrestleMania. Yeah, I guess so. But I'm real, I'm real happy for him. And uh, just, he's also a really nice guy. 
like legit. So eh. Roger Strong. Ah, uh, he's a frat boy. It makes me laugh. Last time I, <laughs> last time I ran into him, this was before he had the kid, before he got married. Congratulations on all that. That's amazing. Ah, uh, he's just a frat boy. Uh, no, let's get some beer. Uh, you know, that's him. I think frat boy. He's like a super him. dad now. Yeah, I, I do. Not, his Instagram is like my secret obsession. <laughs> like how adorable it is, because he beats the shit out of me every time I wrestle him. He let him. Uh, Jigsaw, close friend of mine, but one of the ugliest human beings I've ever seen. Jesus. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You've seen him without the mask, right? I think a lot of us have. He's the only person I know in pro wrestling takes off his mask at one promotion to go to another promotion. He goes back to Jakar, and they're like, look, bro, you're way too ugly. Put the mask back on. Oh, my God. We have children in the audience. He looks like, uh, what's that guy? Sid from Ice Age? The little the sloth, sloth dude? The sloth? Or whatever. Yeah. He says I look like Sinbad. I go, at least Sinbad's a human being. <laughs> you look like a made-up character. An animated character. I feel bad for his mother. I love his mother to death. But, like, when he was born, she must have been like... All right, we got we got the no, th- come on. no no we got the thumbs up. So this is the last one for you. Oh, it's the last one. Why why is it the last one, Mike? We can't go over ninety. <laughs> Chuck Taylor. <laughs> Racist. Whoa! Oh, holy holy shit! Thank you guys for watching. My first uh oh, you don't know what the show is called because I. That was a joke. That I was a joke. Him, I asked Twitter. That was a joke. Here. Come on. Hold on. Let the king finish. <laughs> Chuck Taylor's not Easy a bad... Easy Dwayne Johnson. He's not... Jesus. Jesus. He's not a bad... Don't you dare turn that off, Mike. He's not a bad dude, you son of a bitch. Did he turn it off? He's not a bad dude. We we just have a weird relationship. Chuck Taylor's a good dude. Oh, my God. Someone just gave me the best name. What's the name? Egos Amigos. <laughs> Thank you for watching the first episode of Ego no! Amigos. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, Mike, get that one. <laughs>